So we've been living with the Gas Gas EC300 for the last couple of weeks, and in this video, we're gonna give our review. So we have had an absolutely phenomenal couple of weeks riding the EC300, mostly trail riding in the beautiful Lake District. Um, but we've also been doing a little bit of a, the enduro type work, a few hill climbs, a bit sort of more gnarly terrains, but you probably wouldn't call it hard enduro. And what a phenomenal time that we've had. I mean, for me, this is totally again, scratch that two stroke hitch that uh, you end up having from time to time. and. You know, if you don't know anything about these bikes now, um, the Gas Gas uh, Two Strokes and Husqvarna KTM Two Strokes, these are now the fuel injected version. So there's no more mixing anymore of um, two stroke oil with petrol every time you fill it up. The oil goes in a separate reservoir and it mixes it together. Um, but they've had a few years at this now. And I have to say, it has been absolutely incredible. Um, not only in terms of ease of use, but the way it fuels, the way it rides, it is fueled now to perfection. And that's just made the whole experience um, absolutely fantastic. So rather than being super in depth on this review, I just wanna cover the main points and the distinctives of this bike. The first one is it is incredibly lightweight, easily the lightest enduro bike I have ridden or I can remember riding. You know, from the minute that you pick it off its side stand to where you maneuver it around through to how you end up riding it and how easy it is to maneuver around. It's absolutely incredibly lightweight. And we've actually put it on the scales as well. We got 106 kilos with, with half a tank of fuel in it, which actually is ever so slightly lighter than what their spec sheet says as well. So this is a ridiculously lightweight motorcycle. And also because it's a two stroke, it doesn't have a lot of engine braking. Um, particularly on the technical uh, type of work where you're chopping the throttle, because it doesn't have the engine braking as well, it just plays into that lightweight feeling of the motorcycle. And I think that is absolutely incredible for this application for enduro riding, for trail riding. It just makes it a really easy bike to live with. Second distinctive I would say for the EC300 is the suspension setup. Now, I would say that it's been pretty much perfect for what we've been doing. Um, it's quite soft. It is absorbing a huge amount of lumps and bumps. We've got a lot of sharp rocks here in the Lake District and it is just a very plush ride. It totally fits uh, trail riding and I think it's set up very much as a enduro bikes, not a, a motocross setup um, that's harder, like our WR250F, for example, has got a lot harder suspension, which may make it probably better on a motocross track, but in terms of being plush when you're just trail riding and hard enduro -y type stuff, it is bouncing off rocks left, right, and center, whereas this one is so much more plush. Of course, the other thing as well, as soon as you swing your leg over, over it, because the shock is quite soft, you just, um, you know, you're compressing it down and that makes the bike feel shorter, which is great for guys like me, 5'9", 5'10", something like that. It makes it easy to manage as well. So the suspension, I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job with it. So the next massive distinctive about the EC300 is the engine. I mean, you have to be riding this bike 100 meters down the trail to work out the, oh my God, this is a weapon. It's got more snap than any bike I've ever ridden, I think, in my life. It is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, third, fourth gear power wheelies, you know, just a slightest whiff of throttle, it is unbelievable. I mean, look, the EC300 or this 300 two-stroke uh, derivative of an enduro bike, that is what all of the professional hard enduro riders are racing. That's what they're winning championships uh, with. I now can understand why that is. And you look at them on videos and they've got about a two foot run up and then they're up a 
hundred foot climb or whatever through some of the gnarliest terrain, that's what this engine is about. Some of the other bikes that we own, I'd class as snappy bikes, and they don't come anywhere close to the level of snap or excitement that this one has. So there's times where the engine can be a little bit too much, um, but the beautiful thing about the 300cc two-stroke is its ability to carry higher gears, and that softens the motor off in a lovely way, and that makes it a lot easier to ride. So, for example, there's some trails that perhaps on other bikes would be running first gear or maybe second, where you can hook third and fourth up on this, and it will drive its way up. And that is really unique to this motor. You couldn't do that on a four stroke because it would just stall. Um, this one, you put in third gear, you lose all of that snappiness, that um, feeling that you're gonna loop it, and you end up with a motor that is actually really tractable, will drive up and keep you safe as well. And I think that is a phenomenal thing about the 300cc two-stroke. The other thing that I absolutely love, and this is obviously a uh, feature of a two-stroke, is that it doesn't have a lot of engine braking. I totally think that a two-stroke motor fits this type of uber lightweight motorcycle. You don't get the engine braking. Um, it just makes the whole process uh, easier. You're not, you know, when you chop the throttle, you're not coming over the handlebars, you're just smooth and I really like the way that that feels. Jeff summed up this Gas Gas EC300 absolutely perfectly when he said, look, this is a 10 out of 10 motorcycle. But the problem is we're six out of 10 riders. And that then takes us on to not so much the downsides, but just the things that are to be of consideration with this 300cc two-stroke. The first one is the even though we're doing this type of riding quite a bit, it borderlines being too much on quite a few occasions. Um, so like 90, 95% of the time I'm spending the time going, wow, this is awesome, I absolutely love it. But there's the other five to 10% of the time where I'm thinking, flipping egg, you know, I could send this bike to the moon if I'm not quite careful enough with the throttle. I definitely wouldn't recommend this motorcycle if you are a new enduro rider, or you're a new rider, or you're less experienced. I think it will scare you to death, to be honest. You'll end up either too scared to ride it, or you'll end up having a massive crash and it'll just put you off. Um, that's what I think it'll do. For me, at times, it's been borderline and it has got away with us on a, on a few occasions. There's a reason why it hasn't got a registration plate on it anymore, but yeah, it's got so much snap that it's potentially borderline a little bit too much. And I think a couple of years ago when we rode the 150 and 250 uh, two-stroke Husqvarna's, I can't remember them being quite as aggressive as this on, on the throttle. When you get into that power band and it just zaps, it is like nothing else I've ever experienced. And of course, that's a massive positive if you are a good enough rider to, to, to manage that. If you're a Billy Bolt, if you're a, a Graham Jarvis, no problems. That You're going to turn that into a strength. It's just to be a little bit wary and respectful of what is an enormously powerful motorcycle. And the only other couple of considerations that I would have for this bike, obviously it doesn't come with hand guards and I understand that you just put aftermarket ones on, but generally speaking, I'm pretty uncomfortable riding a bike without hand guards because you know, when you drop them, you're snapping off brake levers, clutch levers, stuff like that. I would whack a set of hand guards on here and I would definitely put a sump guard as well, just for reassurance purposes, basically. And the only final thing I've got, and I, this is absolutely tiny, but I'm not sure the front brake is the best enduro front brake I've used before, where I've used like um, Brembo products on a, on a KTM Husqvarna. They've been a little bit more easy to uh, modulate. Um, but again, you know, this is tiny. Like Jeff said, this is a 10 out of 10 bike. So I think in summary, what I really need to do is go out and buy a six out of 10 motorcycle, which will hopefully make me a 10 out of 10 rider. And then next time I get to try one of these 300s, you know, it'll be a bit of a different story. So on a serious note, what has this done? Well, 
using this 300 uh, EC over the last couple of weeks has totally got me into the Gas Gas brand. I love it. I love the way it looks as well. I think it's fantastic. I'd really like to try some of the other models in their range. I'd love to try the 252 stroke and the 354 stroke just to sort of, you know, weigh up where they sit in the range and so on and so forth and work out which one is the best one for me. But look, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully that's been helpful. Please check out all of the Knox products that we've uh, used to protect ourselves on test. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.